All right, welcome to today's episode of Tomorrow's Leader, where we dive deep on all things leader-related, related to leading yourself and leading others. I am John Lerito, your host. On a very special day, it is December 31st, 2020. We are hours away from capping off, by far, the craziest year we have all had in our entire lives, and hopefully, the craziest year we will ever have in our entire lives. Nevertheless, and I hope this podcast reaches you healthy and happy and now into your 2021 year, but I wanted to reflect back on 2020 because there definitely were some key takeaways. I know myself. Now, some of you may look at 2020 as a bad year, a horrible year, an okay year. For me, it turned out to be a great year. Um, There were certainly some downs, but there were a lot of ups. But most importantly, I want to share with you, what are the the key learnings? I had 10 very specific and very big takeaways from 2020 that I would love to share with you, and I will be taking these into 2021 and beyond that will reframe my thinking, change the way I do things, hopefully change the way that I impact other people as well. So without any further ado, let's go through these. These are the top 10 learnings that I've had from 2020. Number one, now this comes from my own experiences as well as working with countless other business owners and leaders across all different industries. Categorically and definitively, the leaders and the people, the individuals in 2020 that pivoted quickly and pivoted and changed something about their life, about their business, about the way they do things, were generally the people that fared better, that did better overall in 2020, whether it was business, relationship, financial, whatever it was, health-wise, the people that changed something were typically the people that were better off. And if you think about this one ingredient for growth, we need some kind of action. So movement tends to generate the direction that we want to ultimately get to and, and grow. Uh, Some of those decisions and actions that we took might have been the wrong ones, but if we do nothing, generally speaking, the people that did nothing on average were the ones that ultimately did not do as well. So the first lesson is when you're in a situation, my takeaway, when you're in a situation like this and it's cloudy, you don't know necessarily what the future holds, don't stand still, but still lurch forward. And if you don't know where to go, just throw a rock and go where that lands. Just take a step and take an action uh, toward your goals. That's the first number one takeaway. Second, uh, what's fascinating to me is I look around and I walk through life and experience this year. It's come to my attention and it's really clear that people generally adapt to change, massive change, a lot faster and a lot better than I think I ever would have thought. And if we think about what the norm is now, at this point, we're walking around and everybody's got face masks on. We've learned to do things differently. We've learned to live our lives differently. We've learned to do business differently. And for the most part, it was a relatively, it was an abrupt change. And it was a relatively quick adaptation to that change and an adjustment to a new set of norms. So the second learning and takeaway is we all tend to adjust to change faster than we give ourselves credit for. Okay, that's number number two, second observation. Third, it doesn't matter how many people you're leading or how many people you want to lead or how big your organization is or your business or whatnot, the most important person that you're leading is yourself. If you are not good at leading yourself, you will never be ultra effective at leading other people. So it starts with that, and this year for sure has been a year to lead yourself. It's been challenging to lead yourself to do the things that you know you want to do or you have to do or whatnot. Some, some of us have all gotten into a funk. We've been in a bad place at different periods of this year. So leading yourself has been by far the most important ingredient to success as a leader. So that's number three. There's no one more important to leading, leading than leading yourself. Uh, lesson number four. Uh, The days of the know-it-all leader and that person being the the person that people go to or look to or are influenced by are days long gone. Today's leaders are authentic. To me, that's probably one of the most important traits of a leader is authenticity. And you've seen that this year. People gravitate toward people that don't necessarily have all the answers because in this day and age, you don't have all the answers of what's going to be happening in the future. But there are people that they can relate to, people that they trust, people that they see are vulnerable, 
And that comes only from authenticity, not pull, putting up this this facade about somebody we're trying to be or a leader that we're trying to be uh, that that is different than truly who we are. Authenticity is absolutely critical and it's a critical ingredient for tomorrow's leader. So that's lesson number four. Lesson number five, and we've seen this without a doubt be so important, uh, especially in the early phases when we went into COVID, uh, how important communication amongst the team or an organization is. And when that communication starts to break down and there's less communication, there's more turmoil, there's more, uh, there's more insecurity, there's more instability, there's lack of trust, there's lack of motion, people stop doing what they're doing. Ultimately, communication is the glue that holds everything together. The biggest lesson that I had, and I don't care whether it's a business or it's a relationship or whatnot, is when you communicate, that ultimately, and if you over communicate, that's going to pave the way for success. It's going to help that organization or those people work through problems. It's going to help bring that trust together. It's going to help bring that team together. And the best leaders I've seen during this period of time, even, even during the time, not only even, most importantly, during the times when there was the highest amount of uncertainty, the best leaders that I saw were the ones that were hopping on Zoom calls or phone calls with their team to talk through things and share the vision and talk through the obstacles and the challenges and have everybody have, have and feel a sense of community. The best leaders that I've seen during this year, 2020, this past year, were the ones that quadrupled their communication. They were looking for ways that they can touch the people in their organization beyond the ways that they used to that they might not have. The stop by their desk or their office and say hello, that's obviously... Uh, not possible uh, for, for most of this year. So the best leaders have looked at other ways to make sure that they can increase above and beyond the level of communication they even had before COVID. So there's the communication piece is absolutely key. So that's uh, lesson number five. Lesson number six, do what makes you happy. What's interesting is I've seen so many people and I've worked with so many people and leaders and uh, individuals uh, that I've coached that are looking at making big decisions in their life. And they tend to make those decisions, especially when it comes to career decisions or promotions or taking new opportunities. They tend to start that decision with the financial piece. And they start to say, okay, well, you know, if I do this, this will you know, mean more income to me and that will make me happy and that will ultimately solve some of the problems that I have. And in reality, over the short term, that can be the case. And it can even be the case for a decent amount of time. But ultimately, if you're not doing what is and making you happy, then you ultimately, it doesn't matter about the money. Uh, and, and I've shared with you my personal story. When you do the things that make you happy and you're really, truly passionate about the money ultimately follows, and it's amazing at how that happens. Uh, so you have to do the things that make you happy, and ultimately, that's those are the things that 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 drive you to help other people be happy as a leader and ultimately reach their potential. Um, I shared with you on one of the prior episodes, Jim Carrey's dad, uh, and the quote that Jim Carrey had, which doesn't, I'm, I don't have it in front of me right now, but it's it's basically his father was an accountant, and it, he credits his father. His name was Percy uh, Carey for being the funniest human being he's ever seen uh, on the planet. And many people cooperate with that and say, yeah, this guy was just unbelievable. He was just off the charts funny, even funnier than Jim, who's made his career uh, as a comedian. And his father probably could have done the same, if not better, but just never wanted to step out of the comfort and the security that his job offered and his job was he was an accountant. Well, his father ended up getting fired, ultimately lost his job and the family struggled for a long period of time. And Jim's quote was, you could fail doing something that doesn't make you happy. So why not take a chance on something that does make you happy? And it's such a great quote. If you wanna Google and look up the story, it's a fascinating story. But bottom line is when you do what's happy, what makes you happy, it's easier to wake up in the morning, you feel energized, you wake up Sunday, you enjoy Sunday, because Monday's not dreadful because you're going to something you hate. Uh, ultimately, uh, that's what life is all about. So that's number six. Number seven key lesson for 2020. The 
people that I think will reflect back on 2020 as being a a great year for them um, were people that grew as a result of 2020. And it doesn't take a lot to grow, but I've talked about in, in also other podcasts about how A players and organizations, why they leave their organizations. And there's three reasons why they leave. And one is because they're not growing. Secondly, is they're not making a big impact or the impact that they feel they can make. And the third is that they don't feel valued or recognized or appreciated the way that they should. But that growth thing is, is critical. So think about yourself as that A player. If you're not growing, it doesn't have to be a lot, even if it's 1% every single week. If you're not growing, ultimately you're withering away and dying. So there has to be some kind of growth and that takes an investment in yourself, whether it's growing mentally, spiritually, physically, relationship-wise, uh, health-wise, financially, career-wise, whatever the case may be, growth comes from investing in yourself to get that growth. So think about 2021 and what are the things that you plan to do and will do and will commit to do that will lead you to growth. Again, it doesn't have to be major growth, but how can you get better 1% every single week? And that's a key lesson for 2020. Uh, number eight, this is a big one too. You can only prepare so much. At some point, you have to get out there and you got to take a chance. I read a quote a long time ago and it's kind of a silly quote, but it was just, it made sense. If you want to learn how to play the tuba, you got to pick up a tuba and play the tuba. Now, I don't want to learn how to play a tuba, but the point was made in my mind. It like etched it in my mind. It's like, okay, if you really, I taught the leaders all the time that are constantly preparing and and trying to do things to, to get better, which is admirable and you have to, but there's only so many leadership books you can read. At some point, you got to get out there and lead and then become the leader that other people want to read about. That's what I talk about. So ultimately, your biggest growth is going to come from doing. You can't prepare, 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 prepare. You're never going to feel totally prepared for that next opportunity or for that business you want to start or for that life change or relationship change or whatever it is that you're looking to make. At some point, you have to do it. And when you do that and you truly take that leap, things start to fall into place. It's unbelievable how things start to line up for you, the path clears, and ultimately you can really make huge progress. Uh, so that's number eight. Number nine, core lesson for 2020, uh, is all about stepping outside your comfort zone. This ties in with the previous one, right? Because sometimes we just prepare, prepare, prepare. I had a friend of mine who just went to school for, I'm going to say like 20 years. You know, at some point you got to get out of school and you've got to go do what you're in school for. There's a comfort level with studying versus getting out there maybe and doing it. Uh, but you have to face a fear and do things that make you uncomfortable. My challenge to you, you're listening to this podcast, whatever day of the week it is, do something today that makes you uncomfortable, something today that scares you. I don't care if it's a phone call you make, if it's a conversation you're going to have, if it's, uh, if it's calling up a prospect if it's getting in front of a group of people and speaking, uh, whatever it is, something that makes you uncomfortable, do it today. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't put it on tomorrow's list. Do it today. Unless you're listening to this at 11.58 at night, then do it tomorrow. But do it in the next 24 hours. Okay. What happens when you face a fear? Now, even if the, the facing the fear is an action that doesn't result in the perfect result, it's still a victory because you face the fear. Right, So what's amazing about this is when you face a fear, that in of itself is a tiny victory. And when you have tiny victories, people ask me all the time, how do you develop more confidence? And I work with people on that. How you develop it is you get these tiny little victories and you aggregate them over time and it makes you feel like you can accomplish more and more because, hey, I did that before. I faced that victory. You know, I, I faced that fear rather. That was a, a, a victory in and of itself. Now I have more courage to face the next one. And what happens is when we face a fear, we get a tiny victory, that increases our confidence, and then it's rinse and repeat. Do the same thing again. Now step outside your comfort zone again. Do something else that makes you uncomfortable. Uh, it's interesting. Some of you may think, you know, okay, if I'm leading an organization of 10 people, how would it be to, to lead an organization of 100 people? You know, I was working with a leader that, that recently went from leading eight people to leading 250 people overnight. That's a big jump, right? But ultimately, he's prepared for it. He's ready to do it. 
that may be a step outside the comfort zone, but pretty quickly that's going to become comfortable. And then it's going to be like, wow, leading 50 or 100 be nothing. I lead, I lead 250. And then he'll be ready to lead 500, ready to lead 1,000. That's how people grow. Ultimately, they continue to step outside their comfort zone and they push themselves to do that. The people that don't grow are the people that just stay inside their comfort zone, which leads to lesson number 10. My 10th takeaway for 2020, don't stay on a path simply because it's what you know. I'll say that again. Don't stay on your current path simply because it's convenient, comfortable, and it's what you know. I find so many people in business, they stay in a job because, hey, you know what? The devil I know is better than the devil I don't know. Well, you know what? Maybe there's not a devil that you don't know on the other side. Maybe it's actually your dream opportunity, but you're never going to know unless you take a chance. I see people that stay in their role for decades. They stay in the same organization. I'm not preaching, okay, get out there and now change organization. But what I'm talking about is take the next opportunity. Talk to your boss. Say, hey, I'm, I'm looking for a bigger challenge. Let them put something in front of you. Uh, put yourself in a situation. If you're in a rut or in a, uh, a groove that's not the groove that you want to be in in life, well, you got to step out of it and ultimately give yourself an opportunity to experience what you deserve to experience career-wise, relationship-wise, financially, spiritually, everything health-wise. So with that, that's my top 10 list of learnings for 2020. I hope this has been helpful. It has been an unbelievably impactful year for me. And this in and of itself, what I'm doing right now was me stepping outside my comfort zone, doing these podcasts. Wow, when I started was not something I'm, I'm comfortable. I still face fears in doing this stuff and posting on social media. So I appreciate all your support because it keeps me going. Believe me, talking to a camera and to a microphone instead of a live audience has not normally been my thing, but it now seems like it's become my thing. But I rely on your feedback to keep me going. I love to get your text, your emails, your comments and all that kind of stuff. So please, please, please keep them going. Keep liking, keep sharing, subscribe, and go down below and give that five-star review and let me know your thoughts. All right, thanks. Congrats on getting through 2020. We made it. Wow, unreal. And here's to a great 2021. Thanks, everybody.